deep ocean is the last great frontier. It's the last major piece uh, of our planet we still don't know about. This is a really underexplored part of the world, and yet it makes up almost the biggest volume of the living space on planet Earth. We have eight million tons of plastic that are leaving land going into the ocean every year. Some of our members are going to die if we don't do the right thing now. There is a special place on this precious planet where man has never been. Unreached, unexplored, unknown. That is about to change. The Earth is mainly ocean. The sea covers more than 70% of the planet's surface. But we know little about much of it, little about the life it supports. The underwater kingdom is largely a mystery. More than three quarters of it has never been mapped or surveyed, and this place holds a special interest for scientists. It's why, in a programming first, we're taking you 300 metres below into the least known and least protected waters to the Aldabra Atoll, part of the Seychelles in the Indian Ocean, for three live one-hour broadcasts. On or close to the surface, it is a wondrous paradise of diversity, where creatures survive and thrive. But deeper still, we can only wonder what life forms exist. Some we will know, and some we certainly won't. Now, this is a really underexplored part of the world. In fact, not just the Indian Ocean as a place, but the zone of the water that this expedition is going to be exploring is uh, one of the least known parts of the world ocean, and yet it makes up almost the biggest volume of the living space on planet Earth. So here we have this layer of water, which is just below the sunlit zone, but it's in, the, in this twilight world where animals are shadows or they're seen only by the flashlights on their bodies that are bioluminescing. We just don't know what's going to be there, and we can be certain that we're going to find dozens, if not hundreds, of new species. Man may never have been here, but his impact is felt nevertheless, and the signs are not good. Poor thing is tangled up in, it's like fishing gear probably. Species that need our protection instead become entangled in the deadly detritus deposited by humans who all too often give not a thought to the consequence. It's gone through the bone here as well. The lagoons here offer breeding ground and nesting for this precious species. Life is fragile enough without the harm done by humans. It is a constant battle to survive. It is nature's way. But the real danger is unquestionably man-made. Here, plastic is the enemy. We have eight million tonnes of plastic that are leaving land going into the ocean every year. And as a result, we've now got over five trillion pieces of plastic floating on the surface. And most of them are this big. They are microplastics. And rather than it being these islands out there, really it is a fine soup of these pieces that are basically impossible to pick up we can only account for a tiny fraction of that 8 million tonnes going into the ocean actually on the surface. So the big question is, where is the rest of that plastic going? And we expect it sinking. A previous mission to Bermuda showed how the problem of plastic percolates down. to my office. Human debris polluting the food chain below. But it also revealed an undiscovered web of life. New species, coral forests and fossilised beaches. 
They're expecting similar, but better, in the Seychelles. There we go. This is where the scientists are based on the outskirts of Oxford. Paris Stephanoudis has just finished analysing samples from their last mission in Bermuda and is now preparing to head to the Indian Ocean with us. So does this encourage you when it comes to what you might find in the Seychelles? I think we're actually going to find many more new species and new environments in Seychelles and the reason for that is if you imagine Bermuda that has been an area that has been studied for over 100 years and it's a relatively species poor area compared to the Seychelles. So if you go to the Seychelles everything below 30 meters is virtually unknown. And you'll hope in the next two years to be looking at species maybe in this laboratory maybe that you didn't know existed. Uh, that's probably very very certain to happen. We already know where, whenever you go especially in deep water environments that's below 200 meters the possibility of finding new species is uh, is very high, so we're definitely going to find a lot of new microscopic species, but also the occasional kind of big megafauna, like two meter long corals or sponges, that will be new to science. This is a coelacanth, it's about two meters long, and this is a living fossil essentially. It has been around for 400 million years, but scientists up to 80 years ago thought it was extinct. Uh, 60, 60, 66 million years ago. We believe that there's a very high possibility of finding the same fish uh, around Aldabra and the wider Seychelles. What about the chance of finding a new species? I think there, there are possibilities because no one has been that deep in the Indian Ocean before. So who knows what creatures will adorn laboratory walls when this mission is complete? But all this isn't just for the interest of the scientists. It's also about persuading people that it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to the ocean and that there remains a positive story to tell about life in the deep. A story about life forms that flourish and which can continue to do so with help from us before it's too late. Did you pick another one up? It's been estimated in the ocean as a whole. There's over two million species of marine animals. Uh, and other life, algae and so on, uh, and only 10% of those have been described. So 90% of life in the ocean has not been uh, described by scientists. In the Seychelles specifically, um, I expect there to be uh, coral habitats in deep water, so below the depth of scuba diving, where we have what are called mesophotic reefs. And mesophotic obviously stands for middle light, so you can picture these as reefs which are living in the twilight um, on the, on the seabed. So just in, for, in terms of kind of putting a large piece of the overall jigsaw puzzle of where life occurs in the ocean, the Indian Ocean and this expedition is really important. The mission is in many ways a health check of the deep. At the University of Derby, scientists are studying a desperately worrying underwater event. A vast bleaching of coral, the result of rising sea temperatures caused by climate change. It causes coral to turn a ghostly white and possibly die. The knock-on effect on the ocean's marine life is devastating. Corals are amazing creatures. Um, they're, they're pretty resilient in, in many instances if they're given the right conditions for living. What happens when you switch those conditions, um, unfortunately these corals are, are designed in, in usually nutrient poor waters, so they're, they're living on the edge of life, uh, so to speak, um, and a slight single change uh, can actually have a, quite a large knock-on effect uh, on coral and on the whole ecosystem uh, which they make, that make up on. The US Ocean Monitoring Agency has tracked a surge of warm water and the likely damage it does to coral. Their evidence points towards damage occurring exactly where we're heading, the Aldabra Atoll in the Indian Ocean. I've seen near 100% coral cover uh, in many instances all around the world and it's a beautiful thing to behold. Unfortunately, that is becoming a rarer and rarer event. You have to go further afield, uh, usually to far offshore reefs, uh, to still see this. Coral contains the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. It provides a habitat, a shelter, a food source, and its loss is doing untold damage. 
the ocean deserves better. It's Southampton, not the Seychelles, but this pool is where our preparations begin. Three, two, one. Even inflating my life jacket proves a challenge. But we're being put through our paces in sea survival in case the worst occurs and abandoning ship becomes a reality. Keep an eye on the casualty, especially if he's unconscious. If he stops breathing, potentially you could give him rescue breaths. It looks fun, and it was. Give it a shout to Anna Botting can anchor the news without a second thought. But getting into a life raft? So elegant. Come on, Botting, get in. Let's just say it was a challenge taken on with more enthusiasm than dignity. Okay, next one. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's nowhere near him. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how are we doing? Uh, very good, actually. It's, it's not the easiest uh, evolution climbing in, into a life raft. Um, it's not always a, a matter of strength. It's having a, a little bit of technique and uh, being able to get your momentum to climb into it. And, I mean, obviously, the amount of time that you can spend in the water is limited. In sort of warm climates where the, where the water might be up to 28 degrees, it's still low than body temperature, so over a period of time you, you are going to cool down and, and lose energy. But yeah, sharks and marine mammals will certainly be a, yeah. a, 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 a concern. For science correspondent Thomas Moore and the rest of the team, it was all a sometimes nerve-testing prelude to our trip into the unknown. Yeah, good effort, guys. So, are we ready? Is that over? Are we ready? No. <laughs> no. Are we wet? Yes. We're not. We are wet. We're not ready. <laughs> Well, at least you can get yourself in a boat, I'll let me. <laughs> But the success of this trip will depend on the technology. The pictures have to get from our special submersibles to your screen, and we want to give you the best possible view of an underwater world that's never been seen before. That's where these guys come in. Although the lights look steady on these, in fact, what each of, on each of these, there is a, a, um, an array of LEDs, and those LEDs are switching on and off very fast. Uh, and that sends a binary signal, um, so a digital signal that we can encode anything from video, voice, etc., on each of the submarines, and send that to the, send that to the surface. I think it's the, this really is the first time that we've actually achieved this operationally. There are a lot of things that you take for granted above uh, the water on land, like GPS, like your radio, uh, like satellites. None of that works underwater. Um, so we have to work within what we've, we've got. So underwater we've got challenges from pressure, we've got challenges from salt water, we've got challenges from that lack of transmission of uh, electromagnetic wireless waves. Uh, and so it means that conventionally we've been working predominantly with sound for doing communications and positioning subsea. To get the pictures from the submarines we've got two cameras, to go through all these systems and a vision mixer and then it's transmitted through the water up to the surface of the boat where we, where we can manipulate the pictures and that comes through the Bluecom system through the water and then at that point it's then mixed into the rest of the programme, all the other cameras we have on the ship and then from that point it's transmitted over the system on the ship. Got that? If not, here's how we hope it will happen. The two submersibles will sit 300 metres below the ocean but at that level, sea salt, pressure and a lack of electromagnetic waves will stifle any traditional broadcasting. A problem with a groundbreaking solution. A receiver will be lowered between the submersibles and our ship Ocean Zephyr to act as an antenna. LED lights on each of the submersibles will send audio and video information to the platform which in turn will transmit the information to the mothership by cable, where a satellite link will send our broadcast to your screens. It is time we went beneath the waves. The 
oceans are life, our life. It's a joint effort with the Seychelles and Necton, who with an A-list endorsement for the mission, are clear about what they want to achieve. The heart of our planet. To discover the secrets of the deep before the ocean's demise triggers our own. We've been looking up when we should have been looking down. I mean, we've had this great era of space exploration, um, and that has pushed back the frontiers of our knowledge. But now we stand at the point where the most important part of our planet, the deep ocean, is the least known part of our planet and the most important part of our planet. Our floating home during filming at Aldabra will be the offshore supply vessel Ocean Zephyr, specially adapted for the trip. The real urgency around it is you know, we've got a short window of opportunity to try and shift the dial. The scientists are saying, look, we need 30% of the ocean protected by 2030. And we need, we have an opportunity to do it now before we hit too many more points of no return, where the demise of the ocean could mean our demise. The Ocean Zephyr left Bremerhaven in Germany on the 31st of January, traveling through the Mediterranean Sea before going through the Suez Canal and the Red Sea, past the coasts of Yemen and Somalia. Two countries engulfed in conflict and where lawlessness and piracy prevail. And soon it will reach the remote island of Aldabra in the Seychelles. From there, submarines on board will attempt to dive to a depth of 300 metres, the equivalent of the Eiffel Tower. The proximity to lawless Somalia presents a problem of piracy that we pray we don't encounter. It is one reason we will have a security team on board with us. There are concerns of piracy. We've got to work with, with the crew and with everybody on board because we've also got operations going on underwater. So if something, you know, if something happens during an operation underwater, then we have to work on the, the correct reaction and a measured response for this. We're just about to conduct the weapons transfer from the weapons platform. That's the rib coming in now. The team kit equipment's coming in around five boxes. The guns and ammunition we hope are never used are delivered to the Ocean Zephyr in plenty of time for the mission. So the two weapon systems. Piracy is much reduced in the Indian Ocean, but the Aldabra Atoll has been attacked before. Far better to be prepared. We've got a few small boats off our port side. Not really interested in us at the moment, they're just fishing. It would be a concern if we seen one of the boats break off and come towards us at speed. But this is a trip about science rather than security. It is about seeking evidence of what a changing climate is doing to our underwater world. It all presents a challenge to politicians that some are rising to, but many are not. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. For instance, America's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Change Accord has caused consternation among environmentalists. The Commonwealth, though, is trying to do its bit with the Blue Charter campaign. How can we make our response to the challenge that we now understand with our ocean dying, potentially, how do we make that difference? And so we created the Charter, which pulls together all the global commitments that we have made as an international community into one place and basically says, so now what are we going to do about it? Donald Trump makes a habit of tweeting his scepticism about man-made climate change and a strong, legally binding international agreement to protect the oceans is proving difficult to put in place. But scientists and many diplomats believe time is running out. We have to respond and we have to respond now. So our Commonwealth family have no choice. Some of our members are going to die if we don't do the right thing now. We are not inhabitants of these pristine waters, but we are in many ways the custodians. And in that, we may be failing. It is why this mission and the groundbreaking coverage of it is so important. We have a motto in Seychelles which goes uh, like this, our children, our treasures. So if we do not look after the resources that they will have to enjoy when we are gone, then who are we? 
how do we look at them in the face or how do they see our memories? Our children, our treasures. Who knows what treasure of life lies below? It is the goal of scientists to find out and the mission to bring it all to you is about to begin. Thank you.